Here we go. How are you? Good to see you and uh, greetings. How's everybody's day so far? So far, so pretty good. good. Pretty yeah. good, yeah. So I even had a Nexus card. I even had my Nexus interview without an appointment today, which is unheard of. Wendy, you you scored big time getting that. I I'm really telling you. Know. It, it, I know. It's wow. A year and a half to get an appointment. So this is like. That's, you know. My son just went last week with his wife and they got in and everything's good too. I know. It, well, it's because they're catching up because of COVID, right? So it's all good. Of but course. Nexus is the most important card in my opinion, that anyone should have. So there you uh, go. If you like Canada and you're an American, then you got to have it. <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> vice versa, I can tell you that. Well, listen, congratulations on the film. I absolutely love this. And boy, could I relate. Because, Melissa, I got to know where this is coming from. Was this like a therapy session when you started to write this script? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Uh, well, it's certainly there were there have been many therapy sessions, yes. Um, but uh, my my co-writer, my writing partner David and I just started to riff on the idea of what it would be like to explore what goes on in my brain, being no contact with my parent, and do it through a movie and through this you musical. know premise. Yeah. yeah, this premise of going into your brain into a musical where your mom hosts a show and you're a guest uh, and what are all the things that could happen. So it it was very cathartic to make the movie, that's for sure. I can imagine. But did you always have the great Wendy Malik in mind when you were writing this? She's always on our list. We never dreamed we would get her. Uh, we thought there's there's no way she's going to come all the way up here to make this this wacky little movie. And she said yes. And uh, it's been a dream ever since. Okay, so Wendy, I don't know, like when you get the script, are you a little bit insulted? Are you intrigued? I mean, oh, you're never mom. insulted, never insulted by being asked to play complicated, somewhat insane people. <laughs> that sort of made my career. Um, Kinda, oh, yeah, oh. but <laughs> when are you ever good in this? I mean, what a well, challenge. Lisa just said, uh, I think that what we do as actors is a kind of therapy all the time. I often tell people I would be probably a lot more screwed up if I didn't have all these wonderful characters to sort of act out a lot of my stuff in, you know? Mm -hmm. And the script, when, when I got it, uh, through a, a, one of the producers on this film who I had talked about doing another film with, he sent me this and this one, I just went, oh my God, how could I say no to this? It's a chance to use every tool in my box. Yes. I'm not really a trained singer or dancer, but I love to try. And I didn't have to be that good in this. I had people around me who were excellent and made me look good. Um, and it was so much fun. I mean, we had a great time on this film and uh, I think it's hilarious and heartbreaking and all the things that make for a, a juicy movie. Yeah, exactly. It's everything wrapped up into that. And And Melissa, I mean, what I kind of enjoyed so much about it is, you know, it had that 70s cheesy variety show feel to it, obviously. So as Wendy said, you know, you didn't have to be a spectacular dancer or singer, or whatever, it just all work, you know? Um, Cause yeah, I remember growing up as well, especially here in Canada, like they weren't the best, you know what I mean? So it had that kind of cheesy feel to it. For you though, to take on all of this, writing, producing, acting, dancing, singing, you know, everything, like, how did, did you juggle it all, Melissa? <laughs> Uh, well, I love a challenge, obviously, but uh, I also know to surround myself with very good people. So I had partners in pretty much every department. My my partner in life and art, Matt Campagna, co-directed, was one of the cinematographers. My writing partner, David, was a huge part of the production. He was on set helping us out um, yeah. and really me meticulous planning. Like I, I sort of worked each different job. I was prepared in a different way for each one of them and worked with an acting coach on the script as though I'd never written it just so that I was able to jump in and out of whatever role I had to in the moment. Yeah. Oh man. Well, kudos to you. I have to say, um, Wendy, you're, you. you're a, you're a girl mom. Um, did it make you think while you were watching, doing this role? Like, I don't know, like I have sons, I have two sons, so I don't have the daughter thing, but Trust me, I got issues with the sons. Like it's all relatable, no question. What about for you? Oh, I, I think anyone who raises a child feels like they're they're really screwing it up <laughs> an awful lot of the time. <laughs> and you just hope and pray that that the seeds you're planting are going to bear fruit. And uh, in in my case, they did. I'm sure there were times when she hated me, but uh, and there were times I wasn't particularly fond of her, but. <laughs> <laughs> This fabulous woman and she's come out the other end and yeah. I had a, a really 
wonderful mom who passed away a couple of years ago. And I realize how fortunate I am because I have so many friends who did not have that nurturing relationship with their mothers. And, yeah. and it really does sort of lay the foundation for trust in a, in a relationship with anyone from then on. You know, I think a mother's love is just so hugely important. So to watch to watch Melissa navigate this thing, you know, and wearing all those hats and it was done so seamlessly. She never freaked out. She never had like a, uh, oh my God, what am I doing moment? Or maybe she did, but we didn't see it. So yeah, I mean, not in, not in public. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Always all the rest of us involved in this felt like we were in such good hands and it really was uh, a bonding experience being during COVID and we were yeah. all in a tiny little town and, uh, in Ontario and during the freezing winter and pretty much living in this theater together. And I, I there's something about that that I just love. There's something about doing little indie films when it's a good script and you're with good people that um, you feel like you're kind of, I want to say you went to battle together, but in the best possible way. It, it, yeah. was, um, it was really a lovely experience, all of it. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Well, then that means, you know, we'll have you do more Canadian uh, productions. So just keep that on your back burner. Yeah, I, and I'm going to have a Nexus card. So there you go. There you go. Very <laughs> smart woman here. Um, Melissa, I want to ask you, I mean, you, I know it's, you know, Wendy will sit here and blush, but I can't imagine a better scene partner. I mean, my goodness, Wendy, been watching you since they, we're about the same age. A thousand I mean, years. <laughs> since day one, you know, honestly. And every role that you pick it's just so you're so fabulous so when I saw that you were in this I was like gift from God that we got Wendy Malick in this in this movie you know Melissa I can't imagine how you must have felt no I mean yeah gift huge gift and I think you know one of the interesting things is that when we were writing the film uh, we talked a lot about the series Dream On from the 90s which was uh, a, my favorite se series at the time and um, it came up a lot because it has a similar mechanism you know whenever Brian Ben Ben's character is having a thought we see it as yeah. an old clip and um, so we were all, Wendy was already in the room with us through all those conversations. And then uh, when we first spoke, Wendy and I, we talked about Bojack Horseman. We talked, there were a lot of touchstones of this mother character and of the film that involved her beyond our fandom of her uh, as an actor. So I really just am continuing to pinch myself that it even happened and um yeah, it was very dreamy and really the easiest work I've ever done. She's such a wonderful acting partner. It was it was simple, simple right work. Right back at you, girl. Right back at you. Yeah, Thank it you. looked uh, it, it, from my perspective, it looked seamless, but it was just like I say, so much fun to 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 watch. Uh, Wendy, I can't I can't leave without you know, listen, thanking you for everything that you've been in. My God, like, I can't turn on my television. There's Wendy, there's Wendy, there's Wendy. Like, honest to God, like, I'm a big, uh, you know, young Sheldon fan. So that looked like a riot. Of course, you know, in Cleveland to have worked with Betty White and, and those other ladies. Um, you know, I, honestly, I listened to the David Spade's uh, podcast and he's always talking him and Dana are always saying such nice things about you and by the way you need to get on that they podcast that. <laughs> oh he always talks about the show he whenever he can get it in he gets it in and he talks about it but he's always praising you honestly and now we're going to see you in night court I mean how do you even choose what you do I I, I, I am such a whore for work I just say yes <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you that I'm very discerning about what I do. No, I am to a point, but um, I really do love what I do. And I feel so blessed that I still get asked to the dance. And uh, this was an opportunity. I had been on night court a couple of times as a guest playing yes. a criminally insane woman who John put away like 35 years ago. So when they said, we'd like to add you to the cast. And I said, but I'm a criminally insane person who was just... <laughs> What are you going to do? And he said, "No, but you were, but you were a lawyer before you went to prison, right. and we're doing Operation Second Chance, so you're going to come back to night court as another prosecutor." Ugh. It's just the magic of television. It's like when when people die, but then you realize it was just a dream, and they're back again. And exactly. Yeah. Hey, listen, I bought it on Bob Newhart and the rest of it. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> it was the best, best series finale ever. 
It was. Yeah. It seriously was. Well, listen, ladies, what what a thrill to talk to you both today. I really did enjoy this film. It is so much fun. It is really relatable. And uh, just uh, kudos to you, Melissa, for, for pulling this one off. Excellent job. Thank you. And Wendy, thank you so much for your time today. What a thrill to talk to you. Such a huge uh, Nice to episode. talk to you, too. And you, yes. nice to see you, Melissa. Nice to see you, Wendy. Thanks. Bye, bye ladies. Have a great afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye. You, too. Bye.